I want to sing very old song. Okay, hello. Welcome to the island of Airaid off the coast of Scotland, uh, where it is a beautiful, drizzly, foggy day. And this is the New Moon newsletter for the month of Taurus, May and June 2020. And so Taurus is a fixed earth sign, the most stable, solid sign in the zodiac. And it is where the moon is exalted. The moon representing our mind is always moving, right? And a new phase, a new nakshatra every night only spends two and a half days in each sign as it zooms around the earth. And, and so our minds are like that, right? Always moving, always in action, always in motion, even when they are very still, there's, there's this conspicuous absence of movement, right? And so uh, when the moon gets into the sign of Taurus, there's this structure and stability and support that really uh, helps us to um, be calm and content and and at ease and just and slow way down and so Taurus is ruled by the planet Venus Venus is the goddess Lakshmi uh, the Greek Aphrodite the goddess of pleasure and beauty and enjoyment and and these physical ways of being and, and you know delicious food and sensual touch and comfortable beds and and all this sort of energy and so it's a great month for uh, embodiment practices, exercise that, that feels good. It's not, not the time to go, you know, work hard and suffer to get big, right? It's, it's more about, oh, like some yoga feels nice, maybe like a run in the park feels good. Um, the, these things that make us feel good in our bodies. What is actually ple pleasurable? And this is an excellent meditation for this month is to tune into the sources of enjoyment. And, and how do we define what is pleasurable and what, what actually feels good? What do we actually like? Uh, and it, it is helpful to update these beliefs often, I would say. Um, for example, uh, for myself, chocolate is pleasurable, right? And I get a lot of enjoyment out of eating a lot of chocolate. And is chocolate actually pleasurable like when I have a stomach ache the next day like how much enjoyment am I really getting out of that and what's the quality of that enjoyment these are really good questions this month uh, it makes me think of there's a, a classic story in the Vedas of Nachiketas uh, a little boy who has an audience with the Lord of Death and is asking really tough questions and the Lord of Death tries to tries to get out of it and not answer his questions give away his secrets but Nachiketas is, is persistent, and ultimately uh, the Lord of Death describes how humans are in this constant flux or battle or conversation between what is good and what is pleasant. And these are not necessarily diametrically opposed, but I'll speak for myself, most of the time I am seeking to avoid pain and acquire pleasurable experiences. And, and it takes some focus to really tune into, okay, what is actually good? What is proper and correct and, and right and righteous? And, and to attune to that as opposed to like, cool, like I want to sleep in a comfortable bed and eat delicious food and be in a comfortable climate and, and all these sorts of things, right? Which, are, which is pleasurable, but is it good? And, and so this, this is another great meditation for this month is, is what is this conversation between the pleasant and the good? And ultimately, what is good is ultimately pleasurable, right? And in that way that, you know, uh, daily meditation practice and meaningful work and service to others and um, that, that is deeply pleasurable and, and lasting enjoyment in the sense of, oh, this is, this is a good life. This is what this feels like, as opposed to like, ooh, junk food and movies and staying up late or, you know, these, these sorts of things. So uh, to be really careful this month and tune in and do this reflection on what are the good things, what are the pleasurable things, and, and what really brings you pleasure. What, what do you like and what, what is this deep source of enjoyment uh, in your life? So again, reflect on that. Venus 
the ruling planet of Taurus is now retrograde. Last week, Venus, Saturn, and Jupiter all turned retrograde. Very rare to have that many, three planets all, you know, moving forward, slowing down to a stop, and then reversing from our perspective on Earth, all within a couple days of each other. So, uh, Venus retrograde is famous as a time when we are likely to reach out to uh, past romantic partners, ex-lovers, and want to either rekindle or recapitulate or re-examine what happened there and why did it end and, and, and should we get back together? And, and these sorts of questions uh, tend to come up. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's actually in a very appropriate time to do that. Uh, Venus is the part of us that is out outwardly seeking pleasure and when it goes retrograde, it's the opportunity to reflect and say, okay, like, is this, how's this going for me? Is this actually working? Am I getting the pleasure that I'm seeking when I am acting externally? And, and so to go back to ex-lovers, former partners, and ask some questions, like, hey, what, what happened here? And what can I learn about myself? What do you know about me that I am not seeing clearly? These are perfectly valid questions, and this is a good time to do it. Uh, without getting entangled necessarily, you can use your own discernment by all means, but it, it, there is going to be the tendency to indulge in the pleasant physical connection that has been there perhaps. And, and this is another opportunity to ask, is this pleasant or good? Um, Jupiter is also retrograde at the moment until September and Jupiter retrograde encourages us to question our teachers and our teachings and our, our belief systems. And this is again, a good opportunity to really like, okay, this teacher told me this, is that really true? I read this on Facebook. How accurate is that? The news is telling me this, how much truth is in that? And, and so the other side of that spectrum is uh, the tendency to reject good advice and to just say, no, I know better than that. I don't need to listen to any anything and, and see, see how those are on the same sort of spectrum. So we want to be critical and questioning without being uh, rejecting and, and sort of haughty and um, this sense of like, I know better, nobody can tell me different. Saturn is also retrograde. And so this is really the invitation to contemplate what have you learned during this timeout, right? Uh, Saturn went into Capricorn at the end of January, and that's really when this whole COVID thing kicked off in a major global way. And Saturn basically has put the whole world into timeout, basically said, nope, everybody, you're going to go sit in your room and think about what you've done. And so now that Saturn is backing up, uh, it's this question of like, what have, you le what have we learned? What from this experience are you going to take with you? And what are you going to leave behind? And so it's interesting, these planets turning retrograde are lining up with the reopening of society, right? All the progress these planets made that got us into this COVID situation are now backing up. And, and so there is this like, we're going back to normal in some sense. And when things go retrograde, it's specifically encouraging us to do internal work and to do the reflection and to slow down and contemplate and, and all this outward action. What are we, what are we getting from that? And, and to reflect on our actions. And so as things start to open up, strong encouragement to um, go slow and, and steady and, and do this internal reflection and really consider what you wanna go back to, what you're bringing with you, what you wanna leave behind. Now in Taurus, the other end of the spectrum from stability and reliability and, and all that is stuckness and stagnation. And so really important to stick with your daily practices, keep moving, be active, be physically embodied and, and tune into what's feeling good in your physical body and earth element. Uh, the earth element doesn't change very quickly, but it responds to consistent action and attention, right? If we are gonna you know, start to eat better, whatever that means, our bodies don't necessarily change the first day we do it, right? It takes at least a couple days, if not weeks or months before it's like, oh, my life is different. My body is different based on what I've been eating and how I've been exercising, right? So it takes a little bit of time. The earth is the same way. You don't get to, you know, pick a tomato the day you plant the seed, right? There's, there's this longer process. And so this month, it's really about tuning into those steady practices and what can you do every day 
that will lead towards this grand, greater, grander sense of pleasure in your life and, and give you an enjoyable, beautiful life uh, in a sustainable way. So I think that's what I came to say today. Uh, take care of yourselves, enjoy the rest of the newsletter. And if you have questions, as always, please reach out. Happy to connect. Um, and I'll see you next month. Many blessings. Take care. Mm-hmm. <laughs>